You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? It is your girl, your diva in knowledge. Lady Mocha representing Mocha's Cafe. Day Paris, where I'm always serving you wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual awareness. Big ups to all of my subscribers. I appreciate all of y'all so much. Thank y'all for still being loyal, still, you know, being subscribed to me. Those of you, if this is your first time, listen to my content and you like what you hear today, please make sure that you subscribe. Hit the like button. Y'all already know I'm going to deliver a good sermon today. Y'all already know I'm going to represent. I'm going to come through. So y'all might as well just go ahead and hit that like button. So as you can see, I am live in the flesh. I'm reporting from what I would like to call the trap room, the trap house. This is where I stay trapped all day because I'm constantly working on different crafts. You know, I'm trying to, you know, get into becoming my own entrepreneur. You feel me? So I got a lot of interesting cups. Like um, I make customized cups like this is a... Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers cup. I made one for Reg, the bad guy who has a channel. Um, I also do sippy cups for little ones as well. Um, this one is a Cheetos sippy cups, and it does come with a regular cup, y'all. So when the child weans off of the sippy cup, it can transition into a cup. And um, I got a Cheetos cup where I got little Cheetos and everything on it, y'all. So like I say, a lot of people make tumblers, but I actually customize mine. Um, this is a Reese's Pieces tumbler. Nice gifts. You can actually drink out of it. Um, it does come with a straw. And um, the topping is, re is removable. Now, I notice most of the females... Um, they like these type of cups. So for you guys, if you want to get your daughters or your wife something really nice, you know, they love the desserts cup. I don't know what it is. And again, I do do sports tumblers. Like I got the San Francisco. So I can do any sports team, okay? You do not have to just um, limit yourself to what I have. I also do tumblers with special, um, like hobbies. Like uh, my husband likes to shoot pool. So I have a cup in which I made based off of being inspired by him loving to shoot pool. So this has a little pool balls on it, y'all. It's a Billard's um, pool table cup tumbler, okay? So I can do it all, okay? Whatever hobbies, movies, shows, I customize tumblers. Most of my tumblers run from 25 and up. So if you want a tumbler, inbox me. It does, um, it's going to um, include shipping. So you also have to pay uh shipping fee separately and i also sell cable anybody who's paying over a hundred dollars for cable inbox me i can give you over twelve thousand live channels for only 25 dollars a month i do sell amazon fire sticks okay so just want to share that with y'all but i want to get into this right away but i wanted to let y'all know that is my reason i'm um, doing this content from what i like to call the trap room because <laughs> when i get in here i stay trapped okay i'm doing tumblers i'm doing t-shirts that's why you see my t-shirt presser behind me i do a lot of stuff in here so this is where the magic happens but y'all let's get right into it let's get it popping um i wanted to talk about this situation with Jeannie mai and jeezy so as y'all know it's been really really um you know messy between these two ever since jeezy decided to unknowingly divorce Jeannie Mai without her knowing because y'all have to keep in mind Jeannie Mai was you know on her little high horse you get what I'm saying because she finally had got her man Digo and you know all of these guys you know I get it a lot of these man of spirit brothers was like caping for her you know and thinking that sisters was hating and you know you probably had a few sisters that was hating I definitely wasn't one of them, but nevertheless, everybody was throwing all this graffiti and, you know, throwing a big parade when um, Jeezy decided to go public with his marriage to Jeannie Mai. So, you know, she had a lot of these brothers caping for her, you know, Jeezy got a real one, and, you know, she even went as far as to say how she's going to be submissive to her husband, and, you know, and a lot of us who have been fans of the show or you know, followers of the show that she was on, um, I think it was what, 
Yeah, the real. Yeah, I think she was on the real with Lonnie Love and and um, Tamara and all of them. Yeah, I believe it was the real. So we knew from the moment when we found out Jeannie Mai and Jeezy I hooked up. We knew for her it was all about her finally capturing that dark meat because she made it very clear that she would prefer to be in a relationship with white men however she wouldn't mind you know testing the waters you know um with dark meat meaning black men so she made it very clear before she got with Jeezy that black men was more like a fetish for her and that's why a lot of us was looking at Jeezy with the side eye like, dude, do you really realize what you're signing up for? Because you're just a fetish, you're just a fantasy. She made this very clear that she likes her 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 um her um dark meat mean and lean, something to that nature. But basically she was insinuating that um she's perceived black men as a fetish. Something for her to just try, something for her to do. Keep in mind, she was married for 10 years to her ex-husband, Freddie, who basically, you know, was telling everyone how low down she was, you know, how, you know, malicious she was, you know. And a lot of people looked at Freddie as like um, a better male, you know what I mean, you know, that really could not control or could not handle a woman like Jeannie. So anyway... Everybody was capable for Jeannie and Jeezy being together. And they felt like us sisters was just being haters. But the whole bottom line was anybody who felt some type of way was because we knew that Jeannie Mai never had Jeezy's best interest from the beginning. And Jeezy, like a lot of these men, never really knew what Jeannie Mai's true intentions were because they never watched the show when she made that comment and she made that statement. But anyway... So nevertheless, they had decided, um, he met his exotica and, um, they got married and then also had a beautiful baby girl. And in the midst of all of that, while everybody was cheering for them, thinking that, okay, um, Jeezy found him a real one, you know what I mean? Um, all the while Jeezy was miserable. You know, he found out that there's more to being with a woman um other than just her race is not understanding that when you date outside your race if you're not familiar with that woman's culture if you if, if, if you're not really understanding um how she perceives your role as a man based off of her culture that you could basically be signing up for something that you really had no clue you were signing up for and that's what ended up happening um, Jeezy did not know that when he decided to take that oath with Jeannie Mai, it would require that her mother could live with them, her brother could live with them. See, he didn't know that goes with the Asian culture, you know. And I'm not, and I'm not saying all Asians do that. Um, but what I'm saying is that her culture, that is what they do, you know. Uh, she marries that man is obligated to taking care of her and her whole family. So when Jeezy started realizing that her family was coming over, not just coming over, staying over, out wearing a welcome to the point to where they were also benefiting off of Jeezy's income, he realized, you know what, I need to quit while I'm ahead. And it, he would have saved himself a lot of problems if he just didn't go off the merit that she was a non-black woman. Listen, a lot of you guys are going to find out you're not always safe just because you're dating outside of your race, okay? Um, just because a woman is non-colored, you know, it does not mean that it's, it's better chances of you um, having a woman that's going to bring peace to you, that's going to bring serenity to you. It's very imperative that regardless of that woman's race, that you study and understand her culture, um, and it was even brought up to Jeezy. They, they brought it up to him about the dark meat comment. He basically blew it off. Like, yeah, we talked about that, but we good. You know, we got an understanding on it. And, you know, so he had a couple of red flags. But, like, you know, the narratives that, that's being pushed throughout the manosphere and everything else, you know, um, a lot of these male content creators are pushing the narrative that you are safe dating outside your race. Don't deal with black women. Black women are problematic. 
black women are single mothers black women black or just you know complicated they difficult they gold diggers not understanding that at the end of the day a woman is a woman it does not matter what race she is when you piss a baby mama off listen she's going to do everything she can to make you suffer her wrath and this is what my whole point of doing this message is to make men understand it has nothing to do with the woman's color. It has a lot to do with her mindset. It has a lot to do with the way she was raised. And it has a lot to do with um, what season did you meet this woman in her life? Did you meet her when she was struggling? Did you meet her, you know, uh, at the club? You know what I'm saying? On a night where y'all both got tipsy off some Hennessy and smoking some trees. It's, it's a lot of factors that can hinder you having a successful co-parenting relationship with a bitter baby mama. And I'm definitely going to break down all of the elements of that today because me personally, I feel like a lot of these guys that are doing content for men and th their points are pretty much are, are, are very generic. Um, they really don't get down to the steak and the potatoes. And I don't knock you know, any of the red pill, I don't knock the man of spirit, but their their perspective is just so biased. You know, if you're a man who already has problems with women, especially black women, most of the time your opinions are going to be very general and they're going to be very biased. And you're not going to be able to compartmentalize and, and pretty much separate what the issue is at hand specifically because you're too busy focusing on the fact that the women you're referring to are black women and it's this narrative that all black women are corrupt all of us are unreasonable um uh, we all got motives so um my whole purpose of doing this content is because i understand that there are a lot of men who are struggling being able to have a, a functional relationship with their children because of the bitter baby mama now i notice i didn't say bitter black baby mama bitter baby mama meaning that you can meet a woman of any color any race and depending on what you do to piss her off she is going to try to make your life a living hell and as complicated as possible when it comes to you trying to have a healthy relationship with your child. So, um, Jeannie Mai rejects Jeezy's gatekeeping allegation about their daughter. So, Jeezy has recently announced that um, Jeannie Mai has been keeping their daughter away from spending the time that he feels he's entitled to, righteously so, um, Jeannie Mai did not have Monaco by herself. Um, they both are a part of Monaco's life. And that's the way it's supposed to be. However, I already knew, me, like many other women, we knew it was only a matter of time when Jeannie was going to come out and start throwing jabs start making life difficult for him with him being able to have a relationship with his daughter and i am going to come go break down the elements of that as to why that happens because a lot of men are going through this um i have brothers i've had um you know male cousins i am very very experienced and being able to share my knowledge with men that are going through this type of situation on the different tips and tactics and methods in which they can utilize to prevent from having to deal with the tip toxic bitter baby mama and the elements that causes them to uh, end up in these type of situations so let's get into talking about the genie and the Jeezy my thing so um genie my jenkins continues to deny previous accusations made by her estranged husband Jeezy that she is gatekeeping their daughter from him. The former, the real host, 44, refutes claims made in late November that she is keeping her 23-month-old daughter, Monaco, from spending adequate time with her father, J. Jeezy Wayne Jenkins. Uh, this is from a new court filing obtained by People, which is the name of the site where I'm getting information from. 
in the document um my jenkins lawyers retreated re, re, reiterated my apologies reiterated her concerns for her child's safety okay all of a sudden she's concerned about her um her child's safety okay it is essential to clarify that Ms. Jenkins' insistence on reasonable safety measures being put in place, such as safely securing and locking away all firearms that have been unsecured in the past, as well as having familiarity and properly trained caregivers, is absolutely not gatekeeping, but rather a responsible effort to prioritize their daughter's well-being. These requests are grounded in Ms. Jenkins' genuine concern for the party's daughter's safety and security, especially when under the care of others and traveling across the country and are reasonable protective measures, not an attempt to restrict Mr. Jenkins' uh, access to their daughter, it continues. People reached out to both my Jenkins and Jeezy's reps for statements, but did not immediately hear back. In November, Jeezy filed court documents of Fulton County stating that he and the television personality agreed upon a visitation schedule through the end of 2023. However, the situation was becoming increasingly less feasible. The lack of consistency, continuity, and stability inherently associated with such a haphazard and fluid parenting time schedule is stressful to the child. And it has, as is unfortunately inevitable with all families and transition, created unnecessary tension and confusion regarding not only parenting time, but also in regard to each parent's role and rights when the child is in their respective custody the document stated the last filing by my jenkins claims she's given jeezy every date he has requested and also granting him additional time with monaco during the christmas holiday in recent months the exes have traded accusation against one another with my jenkins also seemingly hinting that there was infidelity in their relationship on her ex-partner's behalf, which he has denied. A rep for the rapper called the claim 100% uh, false. Jeezy filed for divorce from the daytime talk show host in mid-September after two years of marriage. The decision to end the chapter in my life was not made impulsively, and it comes with a heavy heart. Despite this, my love and respect for Jeannie Mai remains, the, it remains and the time we spent together holds a cherished place to my heart. So, let's just, let's just keep it a buck. Jeannie Mai is forever pissed with Jeezy. Listen, gentlemen, once you piss a woman off, her rage is cemented forever. Okay? First of all, y'all have to realize, and I don't say this as far as y'all sympathizing and empathizing, but when Jeezy made that announcement of that divorce, she was blindsided because you have to realize all this time while she was bragging about how Jeezy's book was the number one seller, how great he was doing, she was showing all of her love, all of her support, only to be looked like a fool and find out along with the world that Jeezy was divorcing her, okay? So... Just imagine the embarrassment of acting like, you know, you're this prize, you know what it is mean, because you're this exotica, only to find out that your husband has divorced you, okay? So, that's, that's the first thing, okay? You got to realize Jeannie Mai found out about the divorce along with the rest of the world. Secondly, now she has been doing all type of interviews, um, Jeezy hasn't spoken much about it. He said a few things, but now, um, Jeannie Mai is going on this sympathy tour, you know, and she's doing interviews, basically telling everybody, you know, how she was blindsided, how she was heartbroken, you know, she's sharing her weight into Excel moment and, um, gaining all this empathy and sympathy. And it's by nature, by nature, women are automatically going to side with women. You have a select few that can read, such as myself, that can read in between the lines. You have some women who can separate sympathizing and empathizing with a woman simply because she's a woman just like her. But that's a rare breed. I strongly believe 
Jeezy blindsided her because if he were to forewarn her, she would have been planning any and everything to beat him to the punch. And that's just basic common sense. If you know you're in a match with somebody that's going to make your life a living hell, you don't forewarn the enemy, okay? You don't forewarn the enemy that I'm going to divorce you, I'm going to leave you. Why? Because it gives them time to prepare um, for what you're going to do, and it just complicates things. And that's basically why Jeezy took that route. And a lot of women are, are, are angry about that, like that was wrong, that was messed up. But women have done that too. Women have left marriages, blindsided Dr. Dre's. Do Dr. Dre, Snow Bunny, Nicole, she did it. And she did it, I believe she did it two days before their anniversary or two days after or the same day. Dr. Dre did not see his Snow Bunny leaving him. And she blindsided him. That's basic common sense. You cannot prepare the enemy. Especially if y'all are already not on good terms. You know, and Jeezy Mai has even, um, I'm saying Jeezy Mai, Jeannie Mai has even admitted before this divorce was announced that she was disrespecting Jeezy with her mouth, with how she talks to him. And how Jeezy, this is in her own words, had to put her in her place and let her know, I'm not going to tolerate you talking to me like that. So she was very, very open. And this was a big pet peeve for Jeezy because Jeezy has always been like, a laid back type of guy. Jeannie Mai is very vocal. She tells all of her business. She She's always been very transparent. And unfortunately, it has hurt her more than harmed her. So we, we been knew it was trouble in paradise. And it finally got to a place in which Jeezy just said, you know what? I'm out. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to be taking care of her mom or her brother her dog whoever other family members or whatever but this came from Jeezy not doing his research if he did his research he would have known from day one that um Jeannie Mai wanted a, a a a black man based off of fantasy and fetish okay and once Jeezy played into that and married her and gave her a child that put her at a bigger advantage that she finally accomplished the agenda she had from the beginning. So with this myth of only black women have an agenda, you got to realize a woman is a woman. At the end of the day, if a woman has motives, she has motives, whether she's black, white, Asian, or Puerto Rican, okay? But anyway, getting back to the issue at hand, um, Jeannie Mai went on this campaign, going on interviews, crying with Kleenex tissues and, and all of that. Um, about everything that Jeezy has done to her. And I'm not saying that um, she's he's more innocent. I'm sure he's done some bullshit as well. Um, but basically, she's going on this campaign, right? Now, she's went from emotional to now being evil. And this is the stage and the phase in dealing with the bitter baby mama. First, they may go emotional, upset, crying, you know, um, overly emotional about, you know, why things didn't work out in the relationship, why you left, why you no longer want to fight for the marriage or fight for the relationship. First, they go through that emotional chamber of, of, ha of, of not being able to accept that the relationship just did not work. It does not mean that you're less of a woman. It does not mean that you're a bad woman or you're a bad man, less of a man. Sometimes people are just not compatible. Even, even if you don't realize this till after you have a child. It just is what it is. But in cases like Jeannie Mai, women that are very overly confident that they have landed the man that they have um, assured themselves that they would land and think that, okay, I got this guy on my clutches. He's never going anywhere. Now that I have a child from him, I have secured the man. I have secured the bag. And for a man that you have already pretty much assured yourself that would never leave, and he takes that option to leave, um, it devastates you because you're embarrassed because you don't put up this front like you know you're 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 the um you're you're the cat's meow you're this queen of zamunda like i'm the prize he chose me later for you black bitches that's hating or whatever the case is so 
She was on her high horse. And when Jeezy left her, it knocked her ass off of that horse. You get what I'm saying? So, of course, all the sisters was gloating, eating it up for breakfast. Yeah, 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 that's what she did. She thought she was... Uh, this this and that she thought she was this exotica and all this and that and he still left her i mean women had a parade on that and you know a lot of you guys was like see that's the problem with you women you know y'all love to see a brother down y'all love to see a brother get knocked down so you know everybody had their little moment of celebration with the jeezy and genie my um division you know the downfall of their marriage so now what's going on y'all she's claiming that um, she does not feel safe with Jeezy, um, having Monaco, Monaco, their daughter, due to the fact he keeps guns, weapons in his house. And my thing is, Jeannie, did you not know that Jeezy was a street dude? Did you not, like, know that? Um, he was always about that life. Anybody who's been a Jeezy fan or knows Jeezy, he's always been that, nin that ninja. You get what I'm saying? He's never been fake and phony as far as about his uh his lifestyle he's about that life you know what i mean so my thing is all of a sudden it's an issue for you but you had no problem marrying this man and you had no problem having a child from this man so at this point guys and what's going on is you know she's reaching for straws she is literally still angry about how jeezy rejected her and left her so now at this point, she's nitpicking. She went, you know, first she tried to say he was cheating on her. Now, coincidentally, if he was cheating on you, why wasn't she the first to divorce? Okay. She's coming up with all of this stuff now that she realizes that Jeezy has realized he made a bad decision. However, he still has to deal with her for the sake of their daughter. And he wants out. He pulled out. And she no longer has any control over that. And one thing about a woman, when a woman is used to controlling a man, meaning she's used, when she was with you, she's always been able to get you to do what she say. She's always been able to, to uh, persuade you and going against things to make her happy. Once a woman has gotten used to having that kind of control over you, and the moment you pull out, from up under her where she no longer can control you this is where it goes from emotional to evil and this is where genie Mai is right now uh now that she has gained her empathy and sympathy from all of these women in the clouds for all all the all the, the women who already was caping for jay-z to jay-z to fail for all the women who wanted to see egg thrown in her face acting like she was such a prize now everybody you know is like celebrating or, or making a mockery you know what i'm saying out of how they're kind of doing each other in but you have to keep in mind the whole um bottom line is now she's in the evil phase okay and this is where that bitter baby mama drama um syndrome starts going into full force like i said first she said he cheated now she's bringing up guns and everything there's no telling what else she's gonna come up with at this point it's not about what's in the best interest of the child and that is what happens when uh, the bitter baby mama goes from emotional to evil mode it means now I am going to destroy you at any means possible for you not giving in to me for you're not going along with the things the way I wanted you to go along with it. So now I'm going into evil mode. And this is and, and this is what's at stake right now. So at this point, she's going to use any and everything she can to make Jeezy look like the bad guy. However, Jeezy was the one to divorce her. Ironically, she didn't divorce him first. So all of a sudden, because Jeezy no longer wants to be with you, you're you're having safety concerns. You're having safety concerns because what has happened is Jeannie has built up her strength from all of the women that were caping, that was that was already against her and Jeezy being together. 
So you have a lot of women that are capitalizing off of Jenny Mai's emotional state, basically making her feel like her being a bitch is her strength. You know, I've, I've been peeping in the clouds, right? And I'm, I'm, I've been going to her Instagram, you know, going in different like sectors, listening to women comment, on um on genie's my situation and it's like now that she's constantly coming at him or nitpicking and digging for stuff to try to use against him a lot of the women are saying she's she's strong yes you're using your strength genie my is being a strong woman genie my is putting her foot down she's not putting her foot down a lot of women don't understand being a bitch about things does not define your strength Strength does not define you because you're you're finding every angle to try to make this life this man's life difficult with him being able to have a relationship with his child. Because truth is, he was good enough for you to marry. He was good enough for you to choose to have a baby from. Jenny Mai was married for 10 years to her white husband who had no baby mamas, no no instability, yet she did not want a child from her white husband. Okay? Which would have been the ideal thing because she had been married to him for 10 years. She wanted to fulfill her dream of having a child through her fetish of being with a black man. Okay? And once she fulfilled that deed, now she feels like she has the upper hand over Jeezy's life. So I say all that to say this. The bitter baby mama drama at this point in time is at an all-time high. I, I chose to speak on them because I felt like um, that would be the ideal story for a lot of men and women both to be able to relate to. But in this sense, I'm mostly talking to you guys about this because I already have a channel separately for women. So before all the Pakeshas and, um, you know, uh, uh, Tatiana's come up in here talking reckless about how you up here knocking another woman, you don't know her situation, look here, uh, I will... I'm not even going to go back and forth with um, the peaches and the nanays. I'm not about to do that. Um, you want to come into the comment section respectfully. I have done content telling women how to avoid themselves from getting involved with men like this. So check my resume before you automatically assume that I'm only giving content that benefits the men. But in this content of today, yes, this is in... Pre in, 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 in preference to basically giving men a better insight fathers a better insight as to why they don't have and, and probably never will have a healthy relationship with the mother of their children for the sake of the child's sake so let's get into it the first thing a lot of you men need to understand is that if you was in a relationship with the mother of the child and that relationship ended on a bad note whether if it was her fault or your fault whether if you was the one that got cheat got caught cheating and creeping or it was her if it ended on a bad note nine times out of ten the way the relationship ends is going to dictate what type of relationship you have with the child now i know a lot of you guys are saying well mocha that don't make no sense what does that have to do with the child you have to realize women are emotional creatures, okay? And this is not to condone, and, and again, I'm not saying this so that y'all can have empathy or sympathy, but y'all have to realize women do a lot of shit off of emotions. And that's how, that's why a lot of us are messed up today. That's why a lot of us got more children than we could afford. That's why a lot of us um, have, have no real stable track record of healthy relationships. A lot of women, until we learn to get a grip on our emotions and uh, learn how to um, use more logic, use more of a, a more of our logical sense compared to our emotional sense, a lot of us have gotten ourselves in the worst of situations based off of emotions. Meaning, we do things based on how the hell we feel. Okay, so basically, if you and your baby mother. Y'all did not have a good relationship. Keep in mind, she's not going to be able to separate what the hell went wrong between the both of you from you being able to have a healthy relationship with your child. She's not going to separate that. Meaning, if she was pissed 
are angry with the way things transpired and did not work out, keep in mind, she's still going to hold you against that. She's still going to hold that against you. She's not going to successfully let you see little Peaches and, and, and little JJ and still not be in her feelings. Women do not know how to separate their emotions from what's logical. Meaning, okay, I'm hurt, I'm angry, I'm upset that things didn't work out between the both of us. However, I cannot let that affect him spending time with our daughter, him spending time with our son. I'm going to have to find a way to compartmentalize and separate that and not let it let one intervene with the other. Women that are immature, immature and childish and, and who lack comprehensive skills, they cannot separate one from the other. So if you're dealing with a female, if you if you're dealing with a baby mama who uh who who you ended a relationship off on bad terms, nine times out of ten, she's not gonna let that go. I'm I'm just gonna let you know. If the relationship did not work out, she's not going to separate what went wrong between the both of y'all from you being able to have a healthy relationship with your child. It's not going to happen i'm you hearing it from a woman okay if it was on bad terms she's going to keep it there she's not going to be able to separate until she emotionally heals herself emotionally accepts the fact that shit just didn't work out and emotionally accept that i'm hurt but i got to be a grown woman about this it didn't work out i got to move on so that's the first thing the second thing is that you have to realize, how did you meet this woman? How did you meet her? Was there a relationship? Meaning like, were y'all together for a long time and, you know, things just didn't work out? Or was this a female you met at the club one night? You know, you were drinking some Hennessy with your guys, you know, puffing, you know, pass, pass, puff, puffing, you know. And you met this big booty Judy, you know, um, um, thick as pass, thick in the thighs, you know what I'm saying? And you just had to hit that. You just had, you had to hit it. You had to hit it. And the opportunity was so golden that you couldn't turn it down. You know what I mean? So you, you meet this girl, meet this female at the, at the, at the club, at the bar. Y'all having a few drinks and like, hey, what you doing? You know, the club getting ready to close. What you doing for the rest of the night? Oh, I'm going home. I'm chilling. But um, yeah, I sure can use the company. And you like a, a desperate little puppy and dog and he... <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No problem, shorty. Yeah, I, I don't mind kicking it with you. You know, what I mean, let's 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 go kick it out your crib. You know, where where you live at, and you follow this broad to her section A apartment or whatever. You smash, get it from the back, get it from the front, get it from the top, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, bust a few rounds. Here it is, months later. You know, you getting this letter in the mailbox that there's a paternity test. And you're trying to figure out, because you've been smashing so many different broads, you're trying to figure out which broad is this. I mean, what the hell is, you know, because let's face it, some of you guys are very reckless with your dick. It, it just is what it is. Like, you got women out here reckless with their wounds. They let all kind of niggas nut in them. Let all kind of guys screw them, you know, because they're trying to secure the bag. You get what I'm saying? You got some men that are, are trained wreck with their penis. They just, you know, uh, hit anything, have no discretion. And listen... The more easier a woman is, nine times out of ten, there's a dysfunction. Whenever you meet a woman that's willing to let you smash and dash and pass on the first night, she's not that easy for a reason. She's trying to capture a prey. You know, she's trying to secure the bag. It's something she got under her sleeve. It's not too many women that are going to be easy and they don't have a motive and they don't have an agenda. Because a woman who, who has something going for herself, even if she were to smash you, she's not going to let you hit it raw. She's not going to put you in a position in which, you know, uh, she stands a chance of getting stuck with a man who she does not know, who she does not love or not care about. You have a lot of women out here now um, that are womb hustling. So they don't mind letting a dude that they don't know shoot up their club. They don't mind doing that because at the end of the day, it's a hustle for them. You know what I mean? They're not looking at, they're not... Taking into consideration their health, 
they're not taking in consideration of soul ties. They they are adopting when they're sleeping with all these multiple men. They're not looking at any of that. You get what I'm saying? They're trying to secure the bag. So you got some women who will let you hit it raw. And anytime you meet a female that will let you hit it raw, she won't ask you to use any protection or any of that. You know, keep in mind, it's a motive. It's a reason she wants you to hit it raw. She don't have a problem with that. Um, most easy females are very fertile. So if she already has a track record of having multiple different kids for multiple different men, that's already a red flag that she does womb hustling for occupation. A lot of people don't want to believe. But the truth of the matter is you have women. That is what they do for a living. They womb hustle. They look for men who are weak and gullible enough to let them hit it raw. So that way she could capitalize off of him for the next 18 years or 21 years if the child goes to college. You have some women, that is what they do. It has nothing to do with their morals. It has nothing to do with their upbringing. They don't look at it like that. They look at it as this is another way of them securing the bag and getting financial income. Okay? So there are women who will have children just for financial purposes. It happens every day, and I know a lot of women, they're not going to keep it real and go there, but you have some women who will have children just for financial gain, okay? Not all women are having kids because they want to be mothers or they want to have children. They need the income, okay? So they womb hustle. So um, nevertheless, if you meet a woman and there was not a, 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 a solid relationship, you got her pregnant you, she conceived your child based on the, the heat of the moment type situation. This was just a smash and dash. This was not a woman you was committed to. Y'all didn't have plans to be together. You know, let's say you was already in a relationship with a woman. Let's say in the worst case you was married. But you were stepping outside your marriage or, uh, you know, uh, uh, being a bachelor. You know, smashing and dashing on different women. When you get these type of women caught up with you. Women you did not really know. Women that you did not have a prior commitment. There was no relationship. There was nothing solid prior to the conception of the child. Women in this category are most likely to make your life very miserable. Because you have to realize there was no real emotional attachment prior. This was just somebody you were smashing on a regular basis. This was just somebody you know you would link up with. So... The fact that she's making it difficult for you to have a relationship with the child, keep in mind, is because you really did not know her and she really did not know you. So therefore, she has no empathy or no sympathy with you wanting to bond with your child because uh, she wasn't your woman. You, she, she was never really your girl. Y'all was never together. You get what I'm saying? So you can't expect a woman who you never had a prior commitment with to... To, a lot, to, to want to privilege you with the blessing of being uh, in, in a healthy relationship with your child because she does not care enough about you about that. Listen, whether we want to face it or not, a woman has to have some type of care about the father of her child in order for her to give him that privilege of fathering the child. Y'all can cut it, slice it, however you want to do it. But if the mother truly hates the father she's going to do everything in her power possible to make his life miserable because she does not have any emotional feelings for the father of the child which means she has no remorse she has no sympathy and she does not feel bad about depriving that man from having a connection with the child now i know y'all saying well you know mocha that's not right you know, Mocha, what does that have to do with the child? You have to understand. You have to look at this from the concept of a woman that's dysfunctional. Who has um, uh, no sense of morals. Who has no sense of compassion for her child. She's all about herself. She's all about what's, what's, what's best for her. She's not looking at, at what's in the best interest of the child. That's why a lot of men get confused and they can't understand. Well, I want to be there for my child. I'm calling trying to get along with this girl, woman even though she be cussing me out every time I'm calling um you know I'm, I, I, I want to be supportive I'm sending money you know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because 
at the end of the day, it's not about what you do for the child. She's so asphyxiated on you not doing for her, which brings me to the next case. Bitter baby mama drama also um, comes into full fruition when the mother feels like it's the child that's getting everything and she's not. Marinate on that for a minute. You have some women who really think like this. Do I agree with it? Absolutely not. But I, I understand, unfortunately, I understand the damaged psyche of these women and how they move and how they think, you know. And you have a lot of women that look at it like this, especially the, 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 the dysfunctional baby mama. Everything you do for that child Instead of her embracing it, it actually angers her. And, and I know what I'm saying. A lot of you guys are going to be lost and confused, but I need y'all to follow me. You have some women, they're so asphyxiated on you as the father of the child that they are overlooking the fact that she should be giving you the privilege to bond with the child because it makes her life easier. But again, what I mentioned to y'all before, when women go from emotional to evil, all of that goes out the door. And what happens is if, if a woman is still bitter or angry or holding grudges against the father of the child, all of his good deeds she will find a way to di di diminish it, meaning she will find a way to disqualify you. For instance, let's say you're the kind of father, you're, you're highly active, you're, you um, show up to all the football games, you show up to the ballerina recitals, you're, you're fully involved, okay? I can't really school the deadbeats, I can't give y'all too much info, but for the fathers that are fully active, Everything you do, she finds a way to sabotage it. Um, well, why you why you why you sent money for her? Why you sending money for them? Well, you know, I got to pay my rent. Um, why you um put the money uh uh on to on um, buying them some old shoes and clothes when you could have gave the money to me and cause I know what kind of shoes they wear. I know what kind of clothes they wear. You don't know what kind of clothes and shoes they wear. I'm the mother. So you should have came to me first. You should have consented with me first. Now you're doing you're doing something nice. You're doing your part. And it seems like no matter what you do, she finds a way to discredit it. Because you got some women that think like this. Because I had a child from you, that means you have to do for me just like you do for that child that I have from you. If not more, you have some women who really believe this is their psyche. This is how they reason with being a baby mama. Whatever you do for that child, you're supposed to do for them. And some of you men, I'm sure y'all done, y'all done heard it. You can't tell me a time some of y'all making cosign and, 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 um, Admit that you have been in situations like this where you buy your daughter some shoes. Oh, you couldn't buy me no shoes. You couldn't take me with you. You couldn't pick me up. Anything you try to do for that child, she wants to be included on it. She's not looking at the fact, okay, he is taking care of our child. He is doing for her. He is stepping up because there's a lot of women out here now who not even getting that. She wants you to include her on everything. That is because she still has feelings for you. And in her mind, she's still looking at y'all as a family. And not understanding that, yes, y'all are a family because y'all do have a child together. However, you are no longer a part of her family. Y'all are not together. They don't understand that. They don't know how to separate that. It, it, it's this attitude of, I have a baby from you. I gave you a child, even though a child was mutually conceived because it took sperm and it took the egg. Um, a woman cannot have a child by herself. But in her mind, because you got to look at it from a dysfunctional, damaged, bitter baby mama, drunk, bitter, bitter baby mama drama um, viewpoint, she's looking at it like, the moment I gave you a child, um, 
You're supposed to always um, be in debt to me. Whatever I want from you, whatever I need from you, um, you should be able to come through. Oh, y'all, I had to pause it for a second because my, my, my dog was barking and driving me crazy. So I had to pause it for a second. But back to what I was saying, you have some women who think like that. They think that whatever you do for the child, you're supposed to do for them. And they, you have some women who actually get jealous at the fact that you're doing things for the daughter or doing things for your son. And she feels like you should be doing that for her. Why? No real reason. Only because she's your baby mama. <laughs> you got women who really think that. I'm your baby mama, so whatever you do for the child, our child, I should be benefiting. It's not supposed to make sense. What I'm saying to y'all, don't look for it to make sense. I'm just telling you how these women think and how they reason with their place as a baby mama. Now, also, you have situations in which she's really not happy with the current conditions of her life anytime you have a, anytime you have a, 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 a baby mama who's not in a good space in her life meaning she's struggling paying her bills meaning she's struggling trying to get a man you know every other week um there she's moving in a, a jerome a Derek, a mike you know, she, she cannot land a stable relationship because even the men who get involved with her, they find out she crazy as hell, she toxic, she dysfunctional, um, she she's not really um, driven, she doesn't have much going for herself. Uh, a woman who does not have nothing going for herself is going to be a miserable baby mama because at the end of the day, she's so asphyxiated on your growth and your success because why? She doesn't have any. So anytime she sees you climbing the ladder, guys, you got a new job, you got a new car, you got a new house. Keep in mind that instead of her using your growth to motivate her to be a better woman, to motivate her to want more out of life, instead what it does is it makes her despise you even more. It's sad, but you have a lot of women, they rather see their baby daddy fail, not, under, not understanding that if that baby daddy was to fail, um... That, that means their child is not benefiting from that either. You get what I'm saying? So um, you have some women, they would rather see the father of their child fail. I have to text this little person back. Yeah, they'd rather see the mother, they'd rather see the father of their child fail because to them, um, that makes them feel good about themselves. You know, you it's, it's unfortunate. You have a lot of miserable women out here. And I'm not saying all women have this issue. If it does not apply, you don't have to reply. But women who don't have their shit together, women who are career driven, women who don't have anything going for themselves, they're constantly pocket watching the baby father. They're paying attention to your growth, paying attention to you building, all of that. Um, the baby mama who's miserable, who has nothing going for herself is definitely has has high potentials of being a bitter baby mama because she's not doing anything to bring herself fulfillment you know if she's living off the system if she's living off food stamps she's not motivated to want to buy a home of her own she's not motivated to want to get a car her own she'd rather womb hustle she'd rather live in governmental housing she'd rather live off section eight versus you know going to get it raw like most men have to because most men unfortunately um, the government will never take care of y'all. So y'all got to go out there raw and, and hustle and really grind for what y'all want. And this is the thing. The bitter baby mama who has nothing going for herself, she wants what you have, but she's not willing to put in the work to get it. And that's just the bottom line. Um, a, a bitter baby mama who lacks ambition, who lacks being driven, who lacks want more out of life, they're going to stay bitter, especially the more you keep growing and the more you keep prospering. Because in their mind, they feel the sense of entitlement that they should be having that kind of life with you. It's something that, and let, me, let me bring this other point. Let me bring this other point up while I'm thinking about it. You have to realize, uh, some of these women out here, they don't just want child support. The problem is they actually want the same lifestyle that the father has. To break it down more simple, to explain it like this. 
if the court has ordered you to pay, let's say, a thousand dollars a month, okay? Let's say you're giving Kiki a thousand dollars a month for little JoJo, all right? With them thousand dollars, because she's not educated on how to budget her money, she's trying to live like the Joneses, she's trying to stunt and flex and impress, buying furniture she can't afford, buying buying cars with high car notes she can't afford because she's still trying to stunt and flex and prove a point to you as the baby daddy whatever whatever she's not spending her money wisely she's still going to feel like you are not giving her enough money when the truth of the matter is she's not budgeting or handling her finances correctly so therefore it does not matter how many times she gets an increase on child support she's still going to be broke busted and disgusted because she's trying to live outside of her means so a lot of the times it's not the money that's enough to make these women feel content. They want the lifestyle, meaning that if you live in an eight-bedroom home, she thinks that you should be sponsoring her to live in an eight-bedroom home. If you got three cars in your drive yard, you have a Bentley, you have a Rolls Royce, and you have a, a Lamborghini, uh, she don't think that she should be driving a Toyota Camry. She thinks she should be pushing a Bentley like you pushing a Bentley. In other words, it's, it's not so much the money. They want to live the exact lifestyle as the father of their children. That's what makes a lot of them become greedy and constantly go to the courts asking for modification to increase the child support because it's not the money. She wants the lifestyle that you have, not understanding a lot of these baby mamas cannot understand. You're not entitled to the lifestyle that baby father has. You're just entitled to receiving the income. And what you do with that money, that's on you. If you're trying to live lar large and in charge, and you know you're living in Section 8 housing, um, you need to be pushing that Toyota Camry. Um, you're not making the money your baby daddy make. You're not working like he working. So... Uh, just because a man is paying child support, it does not mean he's obligated to giving you the lifestyle that he has. Now, you have a lot of women who say that. I've heard women say that. Well, um, a child, my child should be able to live as, as, luxury, as, as luxurious as the father does. Keep in mind, every time he picks that child up and he takes that child with him, he is getting the benefits of luxury. When that baby daddy is picking him up in that Bentley, guess what? Lil Junior is in that Bentley too. When that baby daddy is getting him for the weekends, guess what? He's sleeping in that eight-bedroom mansion. He will always have the benefits and get to share the lifestyle of luxury with the father of the child as long as you are allowing him to have a relationship with the child. But see, that is not how the sick and twisted dysfunctional baby mama thinks. She thinks that whatever the baby father has, she's supposed to get it. And if you feel that way, that's fine. But you need to go out there and work and grind like the father does. Because guess what? The father has no say-so over the, 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 the state laws that require him to pay child support. So guess what? You should not have no say-so in how this man gets to live and, and splurge and still be comfortable. Because the sad part is, I tell you this much. Some of these women, they want these men to pay so much child support to where they are broke and down and out. A lot of the anger and animosity that they have against the baby father, they really want the father of their child to suffer. They want the father of their child to be broke, busted, and disgusted because they are so angry at them at the fact the relationship didn't work out. Or they're so angry at the fact that the man is still growing. He's still progressing. He's still prospering. Even though he's paying child support, she thought that child support was going to break him. She thought that child support was going to... um. Put, put him, you know, cause him to get back, you know, get back into living the street life, becoming a thug or whatever. And um, everything she tried to do to break this man, it has not broken him. You have, listen, a broken woman wants to see a broken man. There's no way if I'm miserable or I'm not happy with my life, I damn sure don't want to see you happy with your life. That's just the bottom line. If I'm over here struggling, trying to pay my Section 8 rent, and I got to be taunted every time it's time for me to go pick up little JJ, you, I got to pull up in your yard to your six-bedroom, eight-bedroom house, knowing you and your wife, which brings me to my next point, are uh, living this luxurious life. It makes me feel less about myself as a woman. And instead of me bettering myself as a woman, 
grinding harder, grinding smarter. No, I want to take him for everything he has. That way he can give me the life that I am too lazy to get on my own. Brings it to the next point. The bitter baby mama, when she finds out you are in a relationship or when you get married, nothing makes a woman more angry to see her baby daddy successfully move on and be happy with a whole nother woman. That burns her spirit. It burns her. Because you have to realize when the relationship when the relationship doesn't work out, most of the time, in many cases, a, a, a woman prays for that man's downfall. She prays for his downfall when the relationship didn't work because she wants him to learn a lesson in leaving her. She wants him to regret not fighting for a relationship that was probably doomed from the start. So when that man moves on and he does not fail, he prevails, this makes her angry, especially when it's with a woman who she's easily threatened and intimidated by. If you have a wife that's very pretty, you have a wife or a woman, fiance, uh, that's successful, and y'all seem to be in a good place, keep in mind this infuriates her. The bitter baby mama does not want to see a man happy, successful, healthy, and wholesome. She does not want to see it. Also, she can be in her own relationship and still be mad that you are happier with another woman because she's trying to figure out what is it about this woman where he's doing so great. He's, he's prospering and he's growing, but when we were together, it seemed like we were struggling. It seemed like we couldn't get ahead. Well, maybe the man wasn't happy enough with you to have that motivation to want to do more and have more. Um, a, a lot of women, unfortunately, don't want to take accountability for the, the, the demise of the relationship. It's automatically what the baby daddy didn't do, should have did, could have did. So um, because of that, when she sees you with another woman, you're married, you're happy, um, you're, you're doing well, you seem like you're in a better space, um, it, it, it infuriates her. It, it makes her very hostile towards you. A woman leaves a man just so that he can fail. She hopes that you fail. She hopes that you roll over and die and fold. <laughs> she, she's, you know, she, she wants the worst for you because she's angry with the way things did not work out. So she does not want to see you progress. She does not want to see you be successful. She wants you to be stressful down out. You know, so yes, the bitter baby mama um, will never openly receive she'll definitely will never receive you if you're doing better than her um not only that you have to keep in mind you know uh unfortunately in situations like this the wife is also disrespected the fiance is also disrespected and women who are in a situation with men like this keep in mind it's not you she's mad at she's really mad at the baby daddy but because you are married to him y'all together y'all are joined as one because she's not feeling him, she's definitely not going to be feeling you. That's just the bottom line. Though Those of you who are married or in a relationship, you're dealing with baby mama drama, the bottom line is y'all both got to be on the same accord. Some of you men, y'all let these baby mamas, y'all let them disrespect y'all wives, let them disrespect your woman because you don't want to make her mad, you know, because you want to see your child. Keep in mind, disrespect should not have to be a pass in order for you to see your child. And this is where the next point I'm going to come in. And I know a lot of women are not going to be happy when I say this. But once a baby mama becomes way too comfortable with disrespecting you, you have to let her know that if she's not going to respect you as a father of the child or respect the fact that you're married to another woman who also helps you care for that child, you're going to have to leave the bag on her. Meaning that until she gets to that place to where she realizes that she should respect, I'm not saying kiss your ass, I'm not saying, um, you know, uh, um, having to do all kind of unreasonable things for you. But if, if, if dealing with her means constantly having to be disrespected, she cussing you out, talking to your wife all kind of way, because some of you men, you know, a lot of you guys are not emotional. So y'all don't have a problem with a woman cussing you out. Y'all can block y'all can block stuff like that out. But when it comes to your wife, when it comes to your fiance, you cannot let her become comfortable with disrespecting your woman. I don't care. 
period. No, but disrespect should not be a pass in order for you to see the child. If she cannot respect your rules and you have spoken to you, like coming to the house unannounced, calling all time of night, whatever, whatever, then you got to put your foot down by letting her know, um, I'm not going to get my child until I feel like you uh, can respect my, my household. I got a household. I got a place I got to live. I cannot allow you to create hell over here for me just so I can have a relationship with my child. Now, I know this is cruel. I know I'm going to have a lot of sisters that's going to come in the comment section and feel some type of way. Why would you tell a man not to see his child just because I cuss him out? So what? Why would you encourage a man not to have anything to do with him? That, that how I treat him has nothing to do with him getting his child. Let me tell you ladies something. For one, y'all know what y'all doing when y'all do what y'all do. You know, a lot of y'all know how these men feel about their children. Y'all know they love their children. Y'all know they want to be a part of their children's life. And what you are doing is you're intentionally taunting and tormenting the man by being disrespectful to him, being disrespectful to the mother of, to his wife or whatever, because you feel like as long as y'all have a child, you can do that. And as a man, I'm telling you, women who think like this, sometimes you got to play hardball and not come around and get your child for a while so she can understand that your absence, your 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 your, your absence will make her understand um your presence when she did have it. A lot of these women who act like they can do it by themselves. They talk all of that and they sell all of that. But when you make your absence known to them and they got to pick JoJo up from school, they got to drop them off. They got to do everything. They have to do it all. They get stressed out and overwhelmed and they realize um, the significance that you play in our child's life. Sometimes you got to give a person what they want. If the woman wants to be a bitch and think that she can disrespect you and handle you all kind of way because you got the golden prize, which is the child, as much as it hurts, sometimes you got to fall back to teach her a lesson and let her do it without you. That's the bottom line because how is she going to respect you, you know, if you keep sitting up here, let her get out of pocket and say what you want to say to you and your wife just so you can see your child. You have to realize when you allow like when you allow things like that to happen as a man of your house, keep in mind your child is seeing how you allow the mother to disrespect you. Keep in mind that child is going to mimic it. A lot of y'all are dealing with that now. A lot of y'all got daughters who act just like the mothers of your daughters. I mean, I like y'all got daughters that act just like the mother of y'all child. Y'all got sons who are adopting feminine ways from their mother. You know, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, you have allowed this woman to disrespect you in front of them since they was knee high. Now that they full grown and it, you have allowed the disrespect, it has become normalized to them. So now they think they could disrespect you. You have to stop it before it gets out of hand. I get, well, I don't want my child to hate me. I don't want my child to resent me. Listen, long as you're still sending that money, uh, if you got to stop by the school and peep on them and have lunch with them, there's so many ways in which you can still maintain a relationship with that child without having to be disrespected to deal with the mother and yeah, whatever. So don't allow disrespect to become normalized um, with your child because you're already dealing with it from the mother. Do you think, or is it safe to say that if you allow the mother to disrespect you that the child isn't gonna do it? A lot of you men, your sons don't respect you. Your daughters don't respect you because the mother never respected you. Why? Because you never put your foot down. You let her talk to you, talk to your mama, talk to your wife. Some of these baby mamas disrespect your whole family. And y'all sit there and y'all allow it. Why? Because that's my son. That's my daughter. I don't want her to take away my son. I don't want her to take away my daughter. But at the same time, she's training your children how to handle you. What good is seeing a child when a child is watching her treat you like a better male, treat you like a simp. Don't let it be your son, your son sitting up there seeing his mother disrespect you. He's going to allow other women to disrespect him. Or he's not going to respect you as a man. Look at 50 Cent. 50 Cent don't have a, a relationship with his son now because the son has adopted a lot of his mother's feminist um, ways and attitudes. 
Cause the mama handled him all kind of way. He think he can handle 50 all kind of way. And 50 had to shut down the operation. A lot of people mad with 50 Cent, but at the same token, 50 Cent is playing it smart. He putting his foot down, letting them know, I don't, if you, if you want to act like your mama, I'm going to treat you like your mama. You cannot play with these kids. You cannot let these kids think because they mama feel some type of way towards you that it gives them a pass to disrespect you. A lot of you men are allowing your own kids to disrespect you because you feel if you put your foot down, that child is going to resent you. And there's too much of that going on. I'm going to need a lot of you men to start having a backbone, putting your foot down, and start being a man, leading the house, leading things, not allowing the baby mama to lead things. A lot of y'all are allowing the baby mamas to lead things. And it's making you miserable. And I'm not trying to be funny. Sometimes something has to be sacrificed. If it means backing away to keep your peace, not to see the child, then that's something you got to do. And a lot of you might have to spiritually go in your prayer closet, seek God's guidance on how to deal with your child effectively without having to go through all the shenanigans. Some of you are lazy with the courts. Y'all won't go to courts. Y'all pretty much letting the courts dictate for y'all how it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to go. You got to really fight for what you want. That's what it boils down to. But I have rambled on long enough. Um, for any of you guys, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one session with me about baby mama drama, uh, maybe you have a certain situation and you really don't know, because I'm, I'm sure it's thousands of different scenarios. And I pretty much am a good candidate at being able to give you effective solutions that are, are very effective. Um, I've had many male clients come to me um, and seek my guidance, seek my advice on how to deal with the mother of their children. And a lot of them now are in a much better place based off of the tactics, based off of the solutions that I have given them. So if you want that 101 with me, your girl Mocha, email me at cafe de paris 79 at yahoo.com. Keep in mind, it will come with a fee, okay, guys, because my time is valuable. I don't mind giving you all the strategies, all the tools, but you do need to cash out for sister at least $50, okay? $50, I will chat with you for at least 30 to 45 minutes. I will give you a 30 to 45 minute session on your baby mama drama situation. But you have to cash out or sell me, PayPal me the $50 to lock in that session. So email me, say, hey, Mocha, I'm dealing with this right now. I got a special situation. I need your advice. Listen, hit me up, email me. What I'll do is I'll do, I'll, I'll um, create a stream, a stream yard link in which me and you are going to be personally speaking with each other okay it's going to be private it's not going to be live um, for any of my subscribers to hear what's going on or anything like that you feel me so if you want a personal session with me trust me i'm good at this i've been doing this for a long time i am an expert in toxic baby mama drama so if you want that one-on-one -on -one session email me i'll email you back i'll send you a time send you a date so we can get a popping and yes it'll just be me and you personally talking about your situation because i really want to try to help you guys with a lot of these situations and tactics because it's a lot of tactics and strategies that i'm not going to be able to formulate in one video you feel me so you're going to have to personally reach out to me so i can give you those tools and those methods that will be to your benefit all right so anyway before i log off make sure y'all hit that like button um for all of you who want to order tumblers t-shirts make sure you email me put it in the comment section whatever christmas is coming up i know y'all have some um presents some gifts i could do sports tumblers and all of that guys um anything you know to try to make your put a little you know put a little um nice gift out there for someone on a nice budget you know sometimes it's not always what you spend but it's the thought that you put into it so all my sports tumblers like i say are 25 um my tumblers with special toppings are 30 um so hit me up y'all if y'all want to send um your kids 
um, some nice tumblers. I could put their names on their tumblers and I could put from dad. I could make some nice cups for y'all kids and, you know, or your mom or whatever. So hit me up, y'all. You know, I'm not too booked right now. So this would be the perfect time to put in your order. So anyway, I appreciate all of y'all for hanging out with me. It is your girl, your diva and knowledge. Lady Mocha representing Mocha's Cafe. They pair us from always serving you wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual awareness. Y'all be blessed. Take care.